What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to take a look at properties of fractions. Now, here are some properties that we're going to need. So if you don't have these, copy these down, and let's get started. So for all these questions, we're going to perform the operations and simplify. So first up here, be careful. Do not fall in the trap of doing something like this. A common mistake is people just want to add a cross. That's not going to work here. That's a very dangerous bear trap. So what we are going to do instead is we're going to find common denominators first. So where do these denominators match up? They're going to match up at 20. So I would multiply the first fraction by 5 over 5, and I would multiply the second fraction by 4 over 4. And this is going to transform this to 5 times 1 is 5, over 5 times 4 is 20, plus we have 1 times 4 is 4, over 5 times 4 is 20. Now that they have matching denominators, we could add these. But when you add fractions, remember the denominator stays the same and you add the numerators. So we're going to get 9 over 20, which doesn't simplify anymore. And the way we know is this is 3 times 3 and this is 5 times 4. So they don't share any common factors. So let's continue on here. And depending on how good your mental math is, that'll determine if you do this as simple as possible. So when I look at this denominator, I'm thinking 10, 20, 30, and so on. But then when I look at this denominator, I'm thinking the multiples of 15 are 15, 30, 45, and so on. And the first place that they match up is at 30. So I could do times 15 over 15 and times 10 over 10, but I would rather build up each of those denominators to 30. The first one I would multiply by 3 over 3. And the second one, to get to 30, I would multiply by 2 over 2 like this. And now I have 3 times 3 is 9 over 30, plus 7 times 2 is 14 over 15 times 2 is 30. So now when I add these, 9 plus 14 is 23, so I have 23 over 30. That's our solution to 2. So for the next question, we're subtracting. And this one I would multiply by 5 over 5 and then 3 over 3 here so that they're going to have matching denominators. And now we're going to have 10 over 15 minus, and we have 3 times 3 is 9 over 15. And now this is going to work out to 10 minus 9, which is 1. Denominator stays the same because we're subtracting. Now for the next one here, we're going to use order of operations. So we have PEMDAS like this. And since the only operations here are addition and subtraction, we could just move from left to right. So what I'm going to do first is 1 plus 5 over 8. But you could think of this as 1 over 1. And then the thought process here is what is the least common multiple of all of these? Now, I could count by 1s, but that's going to take a while. I'm probably going to want to count by 6s first. I'll have 6, 12, 18, 24, and so on. And then if I count by 8s, listing the 8 times table, we're going to get these values here. 24 is the first place they match up. All right, I'm not going to actually list all the multiples of 1 because that's going to take a while. But 24 is the target. So we could say times 24 over 24. And let's make space over here. So we have 24 over 24 times 1 over 1 plus we have 5 over 8. And to build 24, we're going to multiply by 3 over 3. And then we have minus 1 over 6. And to build 24 here, we're going to multiply by 4 over 4. So now this is going to simplify. We're going to have 24 over 24 plus this is going to make 15 over 24. And then we have minus 4 over 24. So now in one denominator here, we're going to have 24 plus 15 and then minus 4 over 24 like this. And now we could do the arithmetic on the side. You could do this in your head and just say this is going to be 39 minus 4, which is 35. Otherwise, if you got to do it piece by piece, just add them one at a time like this. And we have 39, and if we subtract 4, that's going to give us 35. So this is 35 over 24. Now, the next part, if we want to simplify, I'm thinking here, this is 7 times 5 over 3 times 8. So notice there are no common factors. So this is going to simplify just to this expression here. So now we're going to use the distributive property. But just know what I'm thinking about here. When I distribute this, I'm thinking that when we multiply 2 thirds times 9, I think of this as 9 over 1. But now that we're multiplying, just know when you multiply fractions, the property tells us we're going to multiply the numerators and the denominators. So I'm going to have 2 times 9 is 18, and then over 3 like this. So this is going to make, once again, I'm going to have 18 over 3 minus, and I'm doing 2 thirds times 3 over 2. And for this part, this is going to equal, we're going to have 6 minus, because notice 18 divided by 3 is 6. And then here, 2 over 2 cancels. 
three over three cancels. That's one of our properties that we could cancel out common factors. And it's going to leave us with the one. So we're going to have six minus one, which is equal to five. Now just know as a side note, if I was doing two thirds times nine over one like this, I could also do nine divided by three is three and then two times three is six. And that's another way of getting six. But you could also multiply and then divide or you could divide and then multiply this stuff. Now for question six, we should use order of operations. So what we're going to do first is simplify inside the parentheses. Now to add three plus a fourth, we're going to want to write three as an improper fraction. So I could call three. This is three over one. That's the same thing as 12 divided by four or 12 over four plus one fourth. So this is just rewriting it a different way. So we have common denominators. And then here, one is equal to five over five. And I'm writing it like this so that the denominator of this term matches the denominator of the term we're subtracting. So now when we add these, 12 plus one is 13. So I have 13 over four times, and now I have five minus four is one over five like this. But now I'm multiplying two fractions. So I'm doing 13 times one is 13 over four times five is 20. And this is our solution to six. All right, question seven is a little bit wacky, but what we have is we've got a fraction over a whole number, and then we have a whole number divided by a fraction. So what we could do to simplify this, I'm gonna rewrite this as two thirds divided by, and instead of two, I'm gonna call it two over one. And then I have minus, instead of two in the numerator, I'm gonna call that two over one divided by two thirds. But remember order of operations, that now I'm gonna actually start doing the operations but what we have is subtraction and division, but we have to do division here before we do subtraction. So just know division is gonna outrank subtraction. So now we proceed. We're gonna do keep change flip. So that was one of the procedures. When you divide two fractions, you could keep the first fraction, you could change the operation to multiplication, and you could flip the second one. So this, notice right away, two over two cancels. And now I have minus, I'm gonna do this all over again. I keep the first fraction, I change the operation to multiplication, and I flip the second fraction like this. And now two over two cancels here. So now what this gives us, this is gonna give us one third on the left, minus three, and in order for this to work out, we need common denominators. So three is technically three over one, so I would multiply the top and bottom by three so our denominator matches. And now in the next line, we have one third minus nine over three, and one minus nine is gonna make negative eight over three. So this is our solution to question seven. Now, a quick side note, just know that fractions can be annoying to deal with all the way up to calculus. And this expression, negative eight over three, is the same thing as eight over negative three, which is the same thing as negative, and then we could just write eight over three like this but all three of these are acceptable representations. All right, this is gonna be our last question, but we have a fraction plus a fraction divided by a fraction plus a fraction. So there's a lot going on here, but the trick to making this question easy is you wanna target all of the denominators. So let me make that thought bubble a little bit bigger. So what I'm noticing here is we have a denominator of two, five, 10, and 15. And if we list the multiples of each of these, 30 is gonna be the least common multiple of all of these numbers here. So that's the number we wanna use when we're simplifying this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply the top and the bottom by 30. But one thing to be mindful of is that the top and bottom of this fraction have two terms. So the 30 that I'm multiplying by on top and bottom needs to be distributed to each of these like this. Okay, so that 30 is getting distributed across. Now. What we can do here is rewrite this. We're gonna have two fifths times 30 plus one half times 30 over, and now we have one tenth times 30 plus three over 15 times 30. Now we picked common multiples of all of those denominators, so now we just divide them. What is 30 divided by five? That's equal to six. What is 30 divided by two? that's equal to 15, and then we just do the rest, 30 over 10 is equal to three, and then 30 over 15 is equal to two. And now we just simplify, we have two times six is 12, plus one times 15 is 15, and then we have one times three is three, 
plus 3 times 2 is going to give us 6. Now, when we simplify, we have 12 plus 15 is 27 over 3 plus 6 is 9. And now just divide 27 divided by 9 is equal to 3. So this simplifies real nice. All right, well, thank you so much for sticking it out to the end. And if you got any specific questions, you could write them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.